being one of the essences of the surviving sepsis campaign, I have the very difficult task today of condensing in uh, 93 recommendations in just one presentation. You believe that this is impossible. So I will try my best. Uh, the surviving sepsis campaign is a long process that started at the beginning of the year 2000 just with the Barcelona declaration and developed three different editions of the guidelines over the years. And the next one will be within, uh, within two or three years and we are just preparing the, preparing the, the new versions. Uh, the, one of the most important things that we have to uh, determine the quality of evidence, uh, just identifying the best randomized trials and using a great system in order to uh, give the quality of evidence that we have. At the same time, uh, specific PICO questions were uh, posed and uh, analyzed since the very beginning for the development uh, through the liter literature research, uh, looking at the major database available. Then, uh, for those recommendations where the unanimity was uh, uh, reached, indeed, uh, looking at the grade, uh, the final recommendation were voted, uh, reaching the 80% of the agreement. For the first time in this edition was introduced the concept of the best practice statements that, uh, that is not a true recommendation, but just what we do based upon specific criteria that were never introduced uh, before, uh, very simple criteria. We have to take into account uh, the new definition of sepsis that had been published in uh, 2016 uh, into the JAMA and where substantially there were a change in terms of definition in most of the cases regarding the severe sepsis that is cancelled and is replaced by the definition of sepsis. Whatever it would be your position, this is the way it is, and we try to be consistent in order to incorporate in this new definition within the, uh, the, the, the guidelines. However, the so-called uh, quick sofa was not incorporated because for the moment we do not have any major evidence that it works. And then the uh, algorithm uh, the, uh, for the decision-making process that has been proposed into the definition indeed uh, uh, was not uh, in incorporated as well. Uh, this is the uh, publication that was jointly published into the Critical Care Medicine Journal and the Intensive Care Medicine. And there are some differences concerning the uh, comparison with the previous edition of the guidelines. And two elements uh, uh, were indeed uh, uh, cancelled by the bundles. The bundles do not exist anymore simply because the measurement of CVP uh, or the SCVO2 are not uh, anymore uh, uh, justified by the existing evidence. Uh, you know that uh, uh, these suggestions uh, have been made on the basi basing upon the results of the river trials published years ago and where the insertion of, of the uh, catheters for the measurement of SCVO2, the therapy with uh, um, just addressing the precise level of CVP or the administration of red blood cells were indeed the, the uh, cornerstones. However, the systematic review and meta-analysis that put together the following uh, uh, studies, the RIs, process, and PROMIS, uh, uh, that were uh, negative by, adopt by comparing the reverse uh, suggestions with the standard therapy, showed that there was no real advantage in by using this uh, preconstituted protocol. And for these reasons, uh, this has been uh, disregarded and not uh, recommended anymore into the guidelines. But if you look at the uh, evidence that is available and you, can, you look at the comparison between the uh, intravenous fluids or the intravenous antibiotic that uh, were given to the patients and roll in the river trial and the other three recently published, you may immediately realize that the amount of fluid that they were receiving was not so different. And the, the, there was a sort of protocolization of the, acti uh, of the therapies as well as for the antibiotic therapy. So, indeed, uh, just comparing these two different phases of the uh, medical knowledge, we have to take into account that the overall management of the sepsis over the year changed. And then the three studies uh, indeed used very often exactly the same protocol that uh, in the rival uh, trials was recommended. 
and in general, I do believe that uh, despite we have to recommend something depending upon the existing evidence, nonetheless, we need to be very critical uh, concerning the validity of certain uh, uh, evidences. And for these reasons, we have to uh, avoid to throw away the baby with the dirty water. And we have to save always uh, what is good in the uh, previous evidences. One important best practice statement that starts giving a, a, a very important message, which is the, uh, the uh, emergency that uh, is represented by the sepsis and safety shock. These are recognized uh, with the medical emergencies, which means that they, we need to act very rapidly in order to uh, solve the situation. And the other point, for example, of, of course I will mention only some of the recommendations, is the source control. It is more than obvious that if I'm, I will be unable to put under control the source of infection and sepsis, it will be totally impossible to solve uh, the clinical picture. And all the uh, tools that I have to put into account and consider for the implementation uh, in order to uh, just uh, con have the correct clinical conclusion should be promptly uh, put uh, on, uh, uh, used and put on the table. Uh, the initial resuscitation uh, starts uh, again with something that was very uh, debated, that was the use of the 30 ml uh, per kilogram uh, body weight of intravenous uh, uh, crystalloids uh, given in the first three hours. This morning we had a session where we discussed a lot on this issue, uh, but still there are uh, several different behaviors into various uh, teams that treat the septic shock. Uh, and just to find out a discriminant between what, who, what is right and what is wrong is still not so easy. The other point that uh, uh, is important to mention that uh, in order to uh, take care of these patients, we have to reassess after the initial uh, uh, therapy. And then you need to look at the, uh, um, the various variables that we have uh, uh, available today, uh, especially for those variables that uh, allow us to reassess the hemodynamic status. For what concerns the quality of the fluid that is suggested, it refers a large part to the crystalloids that should represent the uh, uh, first fluid for the volume replacement therapy and also for the following uh, infusion of therapy to correct the sepsis and septic shock. And when uh, too much fluid are needed, one of the suggestions that indeed has a weak recommendation, a low quality of evidence, is to add albumin to the, uh, to the uh, crystalloids. For what concerns the level of low pressure that should be recommended, the recommendation implies that uh, the, 60, the magic 65 millimeters of mercury in patients with septic shock uh, that require vasopressor should be our target therapy, should be our target uh, uh, level of pressure. Even though there are still conflicting results uh, into the study, where, into the literature, where uh, just choosing a specific uh, higher or lower level of blood pressure doesn't represent necessarily a change in the mortality. What concerns the vasoactive agents? Uh, the classical vasoactive agent that is recommended is norepinephrine uh, as a third choice. And uh, there is an additional suggestion coming from other studies, like the uh, recently vanished study published uh, uh, last year, where uh, when the dose of uh, norepinephrine is too high to uh, maintain the blood pressure, is recommended or is suggested to uh, add the vasopressin uh, in order to keep the dose of the two uh, vasoactive agents at a lower level and targeting the uh, mean arterial pressure to the uh, target that uh, we have chosen. The other point is that not always when we adopt these measures, we see uh, that shock uh, is going to be resolved. And under these circumstances, what we have to do, we have just to reassess and look at the hemodynamic assessment, especially of the cardiac function, and we need to determine if there is a, a overlap of different situations, hemodynamic situation, like it may happen with cardiogenic shock, 
or uh, septic shock together when the cardiac uh, failure is evident uh, as an underlying condition, uh, for example, in uh, uh, patients with uh, cardiac ischemia. And the other point is that as soon as we have to correct these variables, what we could look at are the dynamic over the static uh, variables uh, that are more and more used in all uh, the Western world. The lactate, lactate, we again touched the lactate this morning in, our, in the other session, but indeed the lactate level to guide the resuscitation therapy may be an option in order to uh, look at, over time to the normalization of the so-called normalization of lactate levels in order to uh, just uh, identify the lactate as a marker of the uh, tissue hyperperfusion, even though several other parameters are becoming more and more popular just to assess the real hyperperfusion. Antibiotics. Uh, the antibiotics seems to be one of the uh, most uh, uh, common uh, uh, therapies that we adopt, but indeed there were some recommendations that were uh, in a way or another new. Uh, the early administration is an all mark, at least even between, uh, within the first hour of recognizement of septic shock, and the recommendation of using as empiric therapy the broad antibiotic spectrum, especially when we have the need to cover uh, the, uh, with more anti antimicrobials uh, a polymicrobial infection. And the other point is that uh, as soon as is suspected, uh, the um, uh, nature of our uh, bacterial pathogens, knowing what we have in our hospital, then the empiric combination in, uh, by using two antibiotics instead of only one can be another option. And another thing that was not, never recommended before is the introduction of the concept of the antibiotic stewardship, which means the capability of just adapt and narrowing the spectrum of antibiotic in case the germs that is isolated uh, shows a better response to the uh, conventional and uh, narrower spectrum antibiotics and not continuing with the empirical broad spectrum therapy. And uh, the, the identification of these uh, uh, situations is very important. At the same time, uh, I would say that maybe for the first uh, uh, time, uh, there was a, a, an allusion to the idea that we have to restrict the antibiotic therapy to seven, seven ten days uh, in order to uh, adequate to the serious uh, infections that can last more for their resolution. And uh, it is always important to reassess also the antibiotic therapy depending upon the new blood culture or new culture that we have uh, the, the need to perform in our patients. What about the corticosteroid? This is tricky because indeed it was published exactly today, the Hansik study, and I want just to show you a couple of slides on that. And uh, the recommendation says that we should use uh, the corticosteroids for those patients, and patients that do not respond very well to vasopressor therapy uh, to restore hemodynamic sensitivity uh, because of the, uh, the hypo relative hypocortical surrealism that these patients may have giving a 200 dose uh, milli of milligram per day. Well, the, adapt the glucocorticoid therapy uh, is denied uh, in, uh, the, uh, public, uh, in this uh, publication that was published today uh, into the New England Journal of Medicine by the ENSIC, and where, again, the uh, usual negative study coming from the ENSIC, it is negative in terms of mortality. But look at the rest of the slide. In indeed, we do have several good, sorry, several uh, uh, good uh, uh, indicator that there is a, a good effect in terms of reduction of length of stay in the ICU, mechanical ventilation, in terms of reduction of the mortality within the ICU, and in terms of many other uh, advantages uh, that uh, indeed uh, put in question the neg negativity of this study. They may be, uh, it is not different in terms of mortality, but the, uh, despite it's negative, there are interesting uh, achievements. 
The renal replacement therapy is uh, uh, then uh, recommended not to use it uh, unless there is a specific indication for the dialysis. They jump to my last, uh, uh, last uh, um, slide where I thank you, but uh, there were another couple of more. Impossible to synthesize the 93 recommendations that were included into the new guidelines. Thank you. Thank you very much.